All right, Mr. Stan, we're gonna go ahead and put you off to sleep here. I want you to go ahead and take some deep breaths for me. Under the operating room lights, doctors and nurses prepare for surgery, administering anesthesia and draping. Shortly after surgery begins, the patient's vital signs change, and the ECG variations indicate the patient is experiencing cardiac ischemia. The blood pressure drops further, and there are subtle signs the patient is in danger, such as a decrease in exhaled carbon dioxide. Overt signs like chest pain, shortness of breath, dizziness, sweating, and nausea seen in awake patients do not occur in anesthetized patients. The patient experiences cardiac arrest, ventricular tachycardia. I don't have a pulse right now. We have pulses VTAC. Can we start CPR? Let's get that blood in the room stat, and can we get a crash guard in the room, okay? Resuscitation begins, including defibrillation, chest compressions, and drug administration. All right, shock. Shocking. All right, continue CPR. Let's get an epi drip ready to go for me too, Ryan. Successfully resuscitating the patient. The patient you are watching is a computer-driven human patient simulator. The medical personnel are nurse anesthesia faculty and students at the School of Nursing, part of the University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston. They work in the school's preclinical critical care laboratory, or PCCL, simulation lab. It includes a fully equipped operating room, ICU, and stars Stan, the patient simulator. Like astronauts and aviators, this state-of-the-art technology allows students to experience high-risk, low-occurrence events in real time as part of the learning process. In this case, students have just learned how to recognize an at-risk patient, recognize signs of impending perioperative cardiac arrest, and manage and resuscitate perioperative cardiac arrest. In the process, they practiced the cognitive skills of prioritizing, decision-making, and situational awareness, and the interpersonal skills of communication and collaboration, team leading, and team building. STAN is programmed for physiological and chemical response previously seen only in living tissue. His eyes blink and are reactive. He interfaces with real clinical monitors, ventilators, and provides respiratory gas exchange. His airway is realistic, and he automatically responds to oxygen therapy, administration of real anesthetic gases, and to drugs with realistic pharmacological modeling. He has carotid pulse, bilateral, femoral, popliteal, and pedal pulse, and realistic skin. He has breath, heart, and bowel sounds. Stan, the surgical suite, and the two-bed ICU clinical setting give students and practitioners the confidence, skills, and knowledge to manage crisis events during the perioperative period. While these events may never occur in clinical practice, Experiencing them in the high-fidelity simulation lab helps make better practitioners and improves patient safety. Let's call ICU and get a bed stat. In addition to perioperative cardiac arrest, high-risk, low-occurrence events include the recognition and management of malignant hyperthermia, unanticipated and anticipated difficult airway, intraoperative hypoxemia, intraoperative hypotension, hypertension, and tachycardia, pulmonary embolism, venous air embolism, and carbon dioxide embolism, and intraoperative anaphylaxis. Other simulation modalities available to nurse anesthesia students include an array of skills trainers, which allow students to practice in procedures such as spinal and epidural anesthesia techniques, arterial and central line insertion, and peripheral IV insertion. Great job, guys. I think you did a wonderful job communicating today. Yeah, so go ahead and name two things that you thought you did well, two things that maybe you could have worked on. I think remembering to start basic, just like turning your oxygen up and turning your gas and your agent off so it's not working against you. A lot of very serious events that occur in anesthesia that are dangerous to patients are rare and they don't occur every day, thank goodness, but to be able to come in here and actually be hands-on and practice the situation 
allows you to draw on that memory whenever you come across that simulation in real life. There's a big difference between reading about something in a book and then practicing in a real situation. Uh, when they first come into the simulator, they're usually very wide-eyed and you can tell there's a certain level of anxiety. Um, and as the sessions go on, you can see that they begin to kind of immerse themselves in some of the realism that we hope to portray in the simulator. And they look and act like they should look and act in the real operating room. It compares almost exactly to a real operating room. Um, once you get into the situation, your focus tends to go off of the people that are in the simulation lab, controlling the monitors, and when the situation happens, your focus goes right to the patient, right to the monitors, like you would in the real OR. Prior to presenting the scenarios, we reinforce the fact and reassure them that this is a safe learning environment, that what happens in the sim lab stays in the sim lab, and um, if anything bad happens, you want it to happen here in the simulator lab. I did react differently than how I expected. Even though it's a simulation lab, my anxiety was higher than I would have anticipated. And if that does happen in the real world, um, I hopefully will be able to stay calm and say I've been here, I've done this, I know what to do. And I know in the OR, once one person gets a little anxious and nervous, it kind of feeds off to everyone else in the OR. So having that experience of trying to remain calm and keep everyone else calm and go through and do what we need to do to keep the patient safe, I think that's definitely a good thing. A 10-minute simulation probably takes about seven or eight hours of preparation on the faculty's part to get all the details lined up so that we have a realistic scenario and a realistic environment for that student to feel as though, hey, I'm in the moment here and I need to respond accordingly. It was surprising how real everything feels. Being in a simulation lab that looks and feels like an OR allows you to really get caught up in the moment. I think that the simulation lab here at UT Health will impact our ability to be a community partner. It is very important to have a facility like this for medical professionals to come, educate, train, and have a competency level that will improve patient care.